In the last subunit, we looked at the Latka-Volterra equations as our first example of a two-dimensional differential equation. In this subunit, I'd like to look at two-dimensional differential equations more generally and focus on properties of the phase plane. And in this, uh, in this video, I'll start with a couple of examples. So a reminder of what we're working on here. We're looking at differential equations of this form. So we have two variables. I'll call them x and y now instead of r and f for rabbits and foxes. So any old variables. And this is a dynamical system. It specifies how x and y change. But because it's a differential equation, it does so indirectly by telling us the rates of change or the velocity of x and y, not um, directly giving the x and y values. The rate of change of x is a function of x and y. The rate of change of y is a function of x and y. These could be different functions. And note that x depends on y. In general, y depends on x. So we would say that these two differential equations are coupled because they depend on each other. OK, so um, one can solve these equations, produce solutions using um, Euler's method or something like it. And then one gets two solution curves. So let me show an example of that. Here are two possible solution curves. And um, if you did the quiz, you st you've stared at these before. So this is x of t, and this is y of t. And they both wiggle. And then they're approaching 0. So it looks like there's an attracting fixed point at 0. So let's think what the phase plane might look like for this. So I'll try to do a rough sketch of this, and then I'll show you the, the plot that I had a computer do. OK, so let me draw some axes first. All right, so this is y, and this is x. And I just want to get a general picture of the shape of this. So I start, initially, x is minus 7, and y is minus 3. So x is minus 7, y is minus 3. That might put me, that's going to put me somewhere over here. That's my starting point. So negative y, negative x. And I know that I'm going to end up here. And um, these wiggles indicate some sort of spiral. The big question now is which direction does the spiral go? So let's see. So the first thing that happens is y um, increases. And x is decreasing. x gets a little bit more negative while y increases. So that's going to end up looking something, let's see, something maybe like that. You can have that sort of motion. So x is decreasing. That's moving to the left, right? because x is going down here. The value of x goes from minus 7 to minus 8. So x goes from minus 7 to minus 8. But y is increasing from minus 3, minus 2 all the way up here, and it ends up at, at maybe plus 3, it looks like. So that's going to end up um, so around there. And then it will spiral in like this. So this is a um, fixed point at 0, and it's stable because points get pulled in, and we have this sort of spiral thing. We can't really spiral in quite the same way in one dimension, but we can in two dimensions. Um, so I think the, the best way to do this is to sort of to, to go from these shapes to this shape is to think about the starting point, think about the ending point, and then um, what might happen in the middle. Another thing you could do, you could sort of plot point by point. So at t equals 5, we have an x of I don't know, around 4, and a y of around minus 1.5. Um, so maybe that's over here. Um, so anyway, this isn't designed to be um, exactly to scale, but just give the general shape. Let me show you what um, a computer plot of this would look like. Let's see, I can sort of sneak that over here. Try to get this all on the screen. There we go. And I should put arrows on this. My program doesn't do that automatically. So we have something spiraling in to the origin. This is a stable fixed point at uh, x equals 0, y equals 0. OK, 
so that was one example. Let me do one more. So here's another example. Suppose we have these two solution curves, x as a function of t and y as a function of t. In this case, um, again, we have oscillatory behavior, but the amplitude doesn't decrease. So it's uh, the, the, the amplitude and the frequency are staying constant. So let's try to visualize this behavior, oscillations in x, oscillations in y. So if these are populations, they'll be perfectly cyclic. Um, what would that look like in the phase plane? So here are my axes. This is x against y. No time on the phase plane. And we start, looks like I chose the same starting point as before. y is minus 3, x is, I think that's minus 7. So x is minus 7, y is minus 3. I'm going to start here. And then let's see, x increases while y decreases, right? So because I start here, x is going up. That means I expect this blue thing to move to the right. And y is going down. So that motion is going to look something like that. When x is 0, y looks to be about minus 5. Then um, y starts increasing. That means I'm going to be going up in this direction. x is still increasing. And we'll end up with a motion that looks like this. So x is going from, boy, roughly minus 10 to 10. Maybe that's uh, 9.5. I don't know. Right? These are the sort of min and max values for x. y is going roughly between 4.5 and minus 4.5. So this would be an ellipse. It's not um, a circle because this is not the same as that. So the main point is that this type of motion, where we have two quantities that are oscillating uh, sinusoidally, on a phase plane will be some sort of an ellipse or oval. So this sort of motion means that x is moving back and forth and y is moving back and forth, and that, that those motions are in phase. Let me show you a computer version of this plot. Um, there it is. I'll put arrows on. So we can see x is going from a little bit um, less than 9, a little bit more than minus 10 between here. And the um, amplitude of the y is about 4.5. And, and so this would just cycle around like this. So the main point of this is to, um, let's see, so we'll be describing motion in phase space like this. And in a two-dimensional phase space, the thing to bear in mind is that this two-dimensional phase space plot is just two solutions graphed together without time.